A detective who investigated the so-called doomsday mom took the stand today laying out gruesome details in the trial of Lori Vallow. The testimony explained to the jury how Vallow's two missing kids were found in shallow graves in the graphic aftermath as well. Fox 10 investigator Justin Lum joins us live in Boise where there was a curveball in the courtroom today. Justin. And John, Christina, we want to warn you, much of the evidence we were shown this morning was very graphic surrounding the deaths of Lori Vallow's two children, JJ and Tylee. And the testimony we heard from this Rexburg police detective was heavy, and we knew it was only going to get more difficult. But before the afternoon session could get underway, Vallow requested that she be excused from the rest of today's evidence portion, her lawyer citing fragile mental health and emotional day, but the judge denied her. Lori Vallow sat in court with her arms crossed, looking away from the projector screen. Another warning for viewers, what we had to see was extremely graphic. Photos of Lori's seven-year-old son, J.J. Vallow, wrapped in duct tape across his arms and head with a plastic bag on his head that had to be cut off. Detective Ray Hermosillo described witnessing the body at the Ada County Coroner's Office in June of 2020, shortly after investigators discovered the remains of J.J. and his big sister, 16-year-old Tylee Ryan, on the property of her husband, Chad Daybell. The jury looked at devastating images, some holding back tears, as we saw the shallow graves the kids were buried in and what was left of Tylee's remains. Hermosillo says a team of investigators between Rexburg police and the FBI took turns digging because it was so hard to smell the charred bones and flesh covered in dirt. The detective also took the jury back through the investigation several months prior in late November 2019 when Rexburg PD served a search warrant at Lori's town home. Police found empty closets with hangers and no one inside the apartment. They recovered weapons in the garage, including multiple rifles, a handgun, several rounds of ammunition, a ghillie suit, and Alex Cox's passport. Alex is Lori's dead brother, an alleged co-conspirator, along with Daybell. After court adjourned, I asked a member of the defense about Lori's lack of reaction to the graphic evidence. Did Lori show any emotion? We couldn't see her face. So, yeah, I think we're all human. I think she's human. And as, as much as that doesn't get put out there and how we all kind of express those things different. And back in November of 2019, police also found duct tape, rope, magazines, and silencers in Lori's garage. From what we saw, it appeared that her brother Alex Cox did live with her in that apartment because his own unit in the same complex was completely vacant, according to police. And we expect to hear more from this cross-examination with this detective tomorrow morning. Still, so far, we do not know the causes of death for both J.J. and Tylee. John. Um, Justin, a couple of things. Are you able to watch this? You're in the courtroom watching her and kind of taking a, a, a gauge, a measure of her body language and all of that. You're in there or are you seeing it? Is there at least a camera that allows reporters to see what's going on in the courtroom? Hey John, I've been in there all week with a good, clear angle of Lori Vallow from about 30 feet away. And today, this afternoon, I should say, as we got back into the courtroom and we braced ourselves for this evidence, uh, she did not seem like she wanted to be there. She was visibly upset. She crossed her arms pretty much all of the afternoon, and we watched this body language change as we were basically presented with a slideshow of photos showing her dead children, JJ and Tylee. I can tell you it was the hardest thing I've ever had to watch and see as a journalist. You have people in the courtroom, in the gallery, crying. You have the family members of JJ specifically sobbing, and she would not look at the evidence. That vibe remained the same for all of the afternoon, and even as we rose for the jury, her arms remained crossed. She either looked down at the desk, looked away, and by the time this thing wrapped up, we could not see her face from our vantage point because it basically looked like she was hiding behind a monitor and slumped and leaned back in her chair. Well, that and the was impact the body on, language that evolved. The impact on the jury has got to be profound. Yeah, the jurors aren't only looking at these photos, 
but I could see at least one of the jurors staring in her direction. They are watching her. They are yes. watching how she reacts. And this afternoon, she did not want to be in there, but the judge said, you have to be present. Okay, Justin Lum uh, in Boise tonight, and he continues to cover this trial. Justin, thank you. A lot to unpack in this case. In case you want to try to get caught up, it's a very complex, complicated story. But Justin and the Fox 10 investigative team produced a 30-minute special on this entire saga called Murder, Money, and the End of Days, the Lori Vallow story. You can watch it by scanning the QR code on your screen. That'll take you right there. Or you can head to our website, Fox 10 Phoenix, the YouTube page, and that'll take you there as well.